give Jesus some praise, amen? Yeah? Well, my name is Pastor John. I'm one of the staff members here at New Anthem Church, and we're so blessed that you're here with us today. It's going to be a little bit of a different Sunday uh, than, uh, than normal, uh, but that's okay because God's here, and uh, we're going to continue to lean into his presence throughout the service today. Um, what I really felt God put on my heart is uh, to take, really take you on a journey a little bit into some of uh, really my spiritual journey. And so we're going we're gonna to do that. The title of the t- message today, uh, the form of the message that we're doing is called Lifeboats. I'm going to talk a little bit more about what that means. But maybe you're new, you're a guest with us. We want to say a special welcome to you, whether you're part of our New Anthem family or Journey Church family, we're so glad that you're here, and we also want to say a very special welcome to all those that may be tuned in, watching by way of Facebook, YouTube, or our app. Come on, can we welcome our online audience this morning as well? We're excited you're here as well, and be sure to uh, go ahead and drop the word new. If you are new, right in the comments section, either below or to the right of your screen, and our moderators are also going to drop a virtual connect card for you to fill out. It's a great way to connect to the life of our church. Um, uh, this is a special Sunday for me. It's one I've been wanting to actually do for uh, a couple of years. Before we even launched the church, I've been wanting to do a Sunday like this. Um, but to do anything up until this Sunday would have been my timing. And uh, how many know God's timing is perfect? Amen. And so he said, this Sunday is Lifeboat Sunday. So I want to talk to you about lifeboats. What's a lifeboat? Well, I find that lifeboats in my life have been times when I felt like I'm out at sea, felt like maybe the waters are great in my life, I'm drowning, maybe in um, anxiety, maybe in an emotion, maybe depression, maybe a frustration, something has happened in my life, maybe my life has completely went sideways, the bottom has dropped out from under it, and I find myself simply asking God why. And it's in these moments God has been so consistently faithful to send me a lifeboat. And for me, these lifeboats have been in the forms of scriptures, maybe ones that I had memorized, maybe ones that I didn't even realize were in the Bible, even after reading it several times over. But oftentimes these lifeboats for me come in the form of songs. And being a musician for my whole life, a lot of times they come in the form of songs. But many times it comes in going back into my memory, in my mind's eye, to songs of old, songs that I forgot that I remember. You know what I mean by that? And, and God, the Spirit of God will stir up these, these songs and bring me back to that place that I was, and there'll be such a lifeboat in my now, in my today, whatever situation I'm facing. So we're going to be talking about lifeboats. We're going to be talking a little bit today about how do we even find and create our lifeboats. Because how many know like that, that this idea that God could use the, his word, music, other people, or maybe a word, something that we were to sc- stroll, uh, scroll through on Facebook or social media to encourage our souls, that that doesn't just happen to the super spiritual and the super spiritually elite among us. It happens and God can utilize that among any of us that would call ourselves a follower of Jesus. We have access to something called the Holy Spirit, amen? The Holy Spirit of God that's present with us in the room this morning that wants us to leave here changed and transformed, that wants to speak to us, that wants to stretch our way of thinking, wants to encourage us, wants to comfort us, amen? And so I'm gonna be sharing some stories I'm going to be sharing some stories about my lifeboats as we sing and as we read some scripture. And this first song that I want to sing actually um, was the first hymn I think that I ever learned, but it's definitely the first hymn that I ever loved. And I grew up in a Wesleyan church. And if you didn't grow up in a Wesleyan church, I'm sure you grew up in a church like my church uh, because it was like the ancient old musty building, uh, nothing but old people, it smelled like old people. And we're playing nothing but hymns with an out-of-tune piano. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, maybe we all went to church together. But we played with the same hymns with the out-of-tune piano. And we played these old songs that I didn't really understand. Why was there six verses to the songs? But we sang all of them. And this first hymn was the first hymn that I really felt like I truly could worship with. 
and it was hard to, to learning about what worship was in a style and a in an environment that I just really didn't didn't have any love for. And yet, on a Sunday morning, surrounded by ancient people, God spoke to me in this in this first hymn. And it's the first time I really felt like I could connect to the heart of God. And then I wasn't just singing words on a screen, on a projector screen. But that now I was singing something that had become the revolution and the revelation of my heart and soul. And so as we sing these songs, as I sing these songs, you can feel free to sing along. You can just close your eyes and let the spirit minister to you. If you want to stand, you can. If you want to stay seated, you can. Let this, these next few moments be a, a moment with you and the Spirit of God to speak to you, to encourage you, to give you peace, to stretch you. And so this first hymn is called Softly and Tenderly. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. He's waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Come home, come. Jesus is calling, calling, oh sinner, come home. Why should we tarry when Jesus is pleading, pleading? For you and for me, why should we linger and heed not his mercies, mercies for you and for me? Come home, come home, ye who are weary, come home, earnestly, tenderly. church. Amen. Another lifeboat for me and many of my lifeboats, probably all of them throughout my life came through songs and 
I remember growing up, my parents, we didn't have iPads growing up, obviously, and so uh, instead, uh, when my parents just didn't want to uh, deal with us at the moment, they would just stick us in front of the TV and they would put in a VHS tape called Salty the Singing Songbook. Anyone remember Salty the Singing Songbook? Okay, we had one person in the first service. Anyone else? Okay. Um, it was a really weird uh, show, uh, and it was it was like Barney and Friends, but for Christians. And so instead of a purple dinosaur, it was a blue hymnal book. And so this actual physical life person would dress up in a hymnal book outfit with blue tights and blue makeup. Hindsight, extraordinarily creepy. <laughs> and he would sing these songs in this really like high, weird voice. And they were mostly weird songs. But I remember being five, six years old and not really even understanding all the words, but just kind of singing them or mumbling through the words that I couldn't pronounce. And, and my dad would help me uh, and help me understand them better. And there was this one song from the first uh, Salty episode that I ever watched, and it was called uh, Cast, uh, Cast Your Cares. And um, I didn't really know what that meant, but my dad would walk me through it. And then he taught me to sing it when I would get nightmares, and I would have really bad nightmares growing up when I was young. And I would go to my dad, and he would he would, he would pray with me, he would taught, teach me how, like, God's bigger than anything, than anything that you I think is in my closet or under my bed or whatever. God's bigger than any of that. And I would always go back to this song, and I remember even in my own room, if I ever felt nervous or scared, I would sing the words of this song. So uh, this song is a special place in my heart because it was the first song that I ever sang that God really used to be a real lifeboat in my life at the age of five and six years old. But for you today, maybe you go back in your mind's eye to a season of your life that was maybe led by fear, riddled with fear, riddled with anxiety, riddled with doubt, riddled with uh, unknown, knowing what was gonna happen next. And let, let's find God in that moment. Let's allow the God of heaven to speak to us in that moment. Speak through the words of this song that was meant for kids. And let's just see what the Holy Spirit does. I cast all my cares upon you. my burdens down at your feet and any time I don't know what to do I will cast all my cares upon you I cast my cares upon you. I lay all of my burdens down at your feet. And any time I don't know what to do, I will cast cares upon you. Psalm 55 says this, I cast my cares on you. I cast cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. 1 Peter 5, 7 says this, casting all your cares, all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, once for all on him, for he cares for you. And any time I don't know what to do, I will cast all my cares upon church. Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above 
for wisdom in all the ways of man. You were there before the world began. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders the world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way to measure what you're worth. Crucify, lay behind stone, you left and died, rejected and alone, dark rose, trampled on the ground, you took the fall, and thought of me above all. Rejected and alone like a rose, trampled on the ground. You took the fall, you thought of me above all, like a rose, trampled on the ground. Took the fall and thought of me above all. You know, I find that uh, lifeboats often come in the form of God reminding us of things that we once knew, reminding us of a truth that we once believed in the deepest part of who we are and has now become forgotten. Truth that God is in control. Truth that God is so big and so wide and his love is relentless. The truth that we need the God of heaven, amen. And we lose sight of that, don't we? Life gets in the way. gracious Lord no tender voice like thine can be
oceans rise and thunders roar. I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood. I will be still, know you are God. Oceans rise and thunders roar. I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood. And I will be still and know you are God. When the oceans rise, and thunders roar and I will soar with you above the storm Father you are king over the fly and I will be still and know you are God and I will be still and know you our God, I will be still, know you, our God. Yes. It's Jesus, we give you all the praise and the glory. It can be hard to be still sometimes, can't it? to just pause and rest in the quietness of a moment to allow the presence of God to just move and to speak. Let's just bow our heads in this place for a moment if we can. Let's truly be still. Let's think about God. Think about his face. Think about his hand of blessing. Think about his goodness. We're not thinking about the, the next song, what the next moment, what we're going to have for lunch. We're thinking about God. Let's just be still in his presence. song Waymaker recently became a lifeboat for me I was talking with my counselor recently and it was a very intense counseling session and we began to talk about and began to 
talk about things about my past and, and dark things that I didn't like about my past. And in this session, the Holy Spirit of God brought back some and, and, and really uh, had some memories bubble up in me that I didn't even remember that I remembered. And he stirred it up in my soul. And my counselor showed me that that specific memory was a source of a pain point that was manifesting as insecurity, was manifesting as, as anger, as manifesting as resentment and bitterness. And I was, that was playing out in my relationships. That's what he said. And so he had me close my eyes and he took me back into this memory, deep into this memory. And I felt like I was right there again. And with my eyes closed and as, as with having this moment with God, he says, and in this memory, in this terrible season, in this, in this maybe horrific memory that you have, where was God? even form the words to respond to him. It's like the Holy Spirit just began to bubble something up within me. And I was like, he's, he was there. And he was present and he was there the whole time. And he hadn't left me and he hadn't forsaken me. He was right there and he cared and he was preparing to work. And so now what I was remembering as a time was without God, now, we, we, we know that God exists and God's everywhere all at the same time and God's a big God and, and, and God is a loving God. But do we go back to the times where we don't even remember knowing God and are we remembering that he was there and his presence was there even in our darkest moment, even our darkest hour, in the darkest season of our life, there he is. And he was there reaching out his hand to me and I began to just weep. And I had a series of songs just like this one that began to be a lifeboat for me. Because now this was more than just a worship song that we occasionally sing on a Sunday morning. Now this song was a lifeboat because it was attached to a memory of a time that I didn't even know I had access to God. And there he was. He was there. And he was making a way and he was preparing to work even when it didn't feel like he was working even when it didn't feel like he was moving he had never stopped he started right there and he didn't stop with me amen come on can we sing that together church even when i feel it you work even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it you work even when i don't feel it you work you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it you work even when i don't feel it you work in you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't feel it you work in even when i don't see it you work in you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working we make miracle work promise keeper light in the darkness my god that is who you are oh you say we make miracle work promise keeper light in the darkness my god that is who you are 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 and that is who you are that is who you are that is who you are
I feel like God's saying, wanting to tell you, remind you today that your lifeboat, your lifeboat is something that he wants to give you. He wants to give you on a regular basis. Again, it's not for the super spiritual. Don't believe the lie that, that this whole idea of lifeboats, attaching yourself to a song or a word of scripture or, or, or a memory to, to, to lift you out of a mindset, to lift you out of a downward spiral is something that is only for the super spiritual or, the, or a certain level of spiritual maturity. can experience these same lifeboats. I, I wasn't even sure if I was going to do this, but can, can we pull up, um, can you go to Psalms? Could you pull up a Psalms? Let's go to Psalms chapter 16 or um, we can go to Psalms 16 or Psalms 20. I want to show you this because when we discover, when we start reading the scriptures differently, when we start leaning into the spirit of God, what we find is we can do more than just reads, read, reads on it read words on a screen that will help us in some way to, to help us just kind of feel good or ha have better vibes or, or better feelings or even read words that speak to our exact life situation. But we can apply these words to our lives a little bit differently, a little bit more uniquely in such a way where they can become a lifeboat. And here's what I know about a lifeboat. We can come back to this lifeboat time and time again for help. This is why God calls us to hide his word in our hearts that we might not sin against him. To hide his word is to simply lean on all of these lifeboats, whether it be scripture, whether it be a song written through a scripture. Cease, can you pull that up? Uh, Psalm 16, verse one and two. It says this, preserve me, O God, for in thee do I take refuge. O my soul, thou hast said unto Jehovah, thou art my Lord, I have no good beyond thee. Let, let's just camp on that for a moment. I know it was kind of a wacky translation. I want to show you how this can become a lifeboat, how we can take pieces of this and we can make this our lifeboat, we can make this our anthem. Maybe you've heard me, we sing songs that you're familiar with and you hear one version of it right on the, the CD or the radio and then you come and you hear a different version and you hear me just kind of add some things in. Maybe you wonder like, uh, what's going on there? Like that's not how the song goes, the chorus is over, pastor's still singing, he's singing, he's like kind of flowing, I don't know what he's really doing. See, that's a lifeboat because the Spirit's downloading things. He, he's, he's resonating things in my heart that I just, I, I love to sing about him and, and sing how he's, he's faithful and he's good. And, and sometimes I just want to keep singing because that's my lifeboat in that moment. And for you, it can become the exact same way as we read scripture. Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I take refuge. I take refuge in you, God. See, we want to we wanna study uh, 10 scriptures every single day to feel like the, 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 the best Christian. What if we meditated on one? What if we let one text, one piece of scripture become our lifeboat? That's our lifeboat for the day. What if all we took from this is, for in thee do I take refuge? What if your prayer for the day was, God, I want to be able to take refuge in me. Show me how I need to be taking refuge in me. Like, start to reveal in me, Holy Spirit, ways that I'm not surrendering to you, ways of thinking that, that are still my way of thinking and not your way of thinking. God, teach me, stretch me, teach me how to do this in such a way that would be pleasing to you. I want to take refuge in you. The ways that I, I, when I become fearful, when I become doubtful, I run to my own strength. I need to be coming to you because you're my refuge, God. What, this is what it means to meditate on the word of God. This is what it means for the word to become a lifeboat. You want to know what I do? What I do, what helps me meditate on scripture? I, I, just, I just sing the scripture. Like I, I know I'm a musician, but most of the time it doesn't sound very good. Let me tell you. I, I'll just hum it along. I'll, just, I'll be singing something so random it might not even make any sense just about how I'm going to take refuge in the Lord and it becomes a lifeboat for me.
just singing songs. We're not just reading words. We're reading transformative words that as we proclaim them over our life can radically change your life, can change your heart. This is why we declare them. This is why we're to sing. This is why we're to sing new songs into the Lord, songs that we just come up with on the spot. I didn't even plan on doing this, but I didn't do this for a service. We're just doing it now because I want to show you how you can create lifeboats in your own life. And maybe it's not musical. Maybe it's just something you're going to meditate on. And you, maybe your life photo is you want to just, you just want to say that last part. For thee, do I, for in thee, do I take refuge? You want to just say that over yourself like a hundred times throughout the day. It's like a challenge for yourself. Maybe that is your lifeboat. You see, for me, this whole idea of lifeboats started for me when I was in junior high. And I went to a church summer camp. You remember church summer camp? Anyone go to those? You know, the ones that never had air conditioning, even in the auditorium? They had these big echoey rooms, and the projectors weren't a thing then, and so they had the, 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 the screen, right? And they put the transparent plastic, like with the words up, and it was always late, so you didn't know what to sing next, and then they'd slide it up there just in time. It was that, 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 those were the events, those were the camps that changed my life. And this is, I believe, when this whole lifeboat analogy really became real because it was at the very first camp I ever went to when I sang this next song and I first felt the presence of God in my life. And I had been praying that whole week because I'm seeing kids raise their hand and crying. And I just, I'm not one of those people that's like, oh, you're doing it. I'm going to act like I'm crying. Like, uh, I'm crying. You know, like I don't... I wasn't one of those kids. I'm just like, no, I want it to be real. And I prayed for that, but I wanted it to be so real. I didn't want it to be something I was just kind of running after, chasing after, feeling. I want, I'm like, God, I just want to feel your presence in such a way that would have me connect with you on a deeper level. And I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. And it was like either the second or last night of camp, we're singing these next couple songs that we're going to sing. And the presence of God just fell. And my whole body began to feel warm. And it wasn't because it was 90 degrees outside. No, I felt warm inside in a way that I couldn't explain. And I felt the peace that I could never explain to you. I could never even explain with words, but it, it just surrounded me. And these songs became my lifeboat because these songs was, was, was when really the, everything that I believed about God became tangible even for a moment. And so for me, these are always the songs that, that I go back to songs when I first felt the presence and the spirit of God. So maybe as we sing these, you were, go back in your mind's eye to the first time you ever felt God reach into your life, touch you, put his hand on your shoulder. You felt his presence. You felt his presence in the room. Go back to that memory as we sing these songs and worship him. You are my strength and I am weak. You are the treasure that I see, you are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel, 
Lord, to give up but be a fool. You were my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. chorus again. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, precious Lamb of God, to the Lord all the earth let us sing power and majesty praise to the King mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name I sing joy at the word of your hand forever I love you forever I'll stand nothing compares to the promise I have in nothing compares to the promise I have it nothing compares to the promise I have in you. I love you, Lord, and I lift my to worship you, oh my soul, rejoice, take joy my King, in what you Let it be a sweet, sweet sound. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound. In your Amen, church. Is he worthy of our praise today? Amen. Amen. We love you, church, so much. I know this was a different service. We'll be diving right back into the word of God next week. And we pray for you every week. We want you to know that. And our prayer is the same. Our prayer is that the Lord blesses you, keeps you, causes his face to shine upon you, turns his countenance towards you, is gracious to you, and gives you peace. Why? Because the best is yet to come. And we'll see you guys next week. Hey, thank you so much for checking out New Anthem Church's YouTube channel. It is our heart and our prayer that this message would be encouraging and impactful for you. If you enjoyed this video, we have tons just like it already on our channel, and we would encourage you to hit the subscribe button either down below or right over here. That way you can stay up to date on when we post the messages. Now, if you don't want to wait for them to come out, we do live stream at 11 a.m. every single Sunday on Facebook at My New Anthem Church. Now here at New Anthem, our vision is so simple. We want to experience Jesus, 
We want to equip his people. And we want to empower the world. So with that, we want to say we love you and God bless.